Good evening and welcome to New Center 3 on WCBS. Presented on Bethany Cable TV 3 by the Bethany College Department of Communication. I'm Vanessa Staffaros and I'm Robin Mignesti. The top stories on tonight's newscast, the details of Bethany's upcoming Thanksgiving break have been released by the Dean of Students Office. A date for debate has been set. Candidates for the 1995 president and vice president will duke it out. We have the details. And the Bethany men's soccer team is headed for New Jersey. We'll have more on that story in sports. Stay tuned for these stories, plus the weather picture from Marilyn McCloskey, sports highlights by Keith Piasecki, and an interview of Diana Flores Buck by Dirk Swigman. This is New Center 3 for Tuesday, November 15, 1994. There's a lot of excitement in the air as Thanksgiving break gets closer. The recess will officially begin at 4 p.m. this Friday. Residence halls will officially close at noon on Saturday. The cafeteria at 6 30 on Friday, the barn at 4 on Friday, and the infirmary at 7 a.m. on Saturday. As for reopening, classes will start again on Monday, November 28th at 8 a.m. On Sunday, November 27th, the residence halls will reopen at noon. With resident halls officially closing, students are reminded to follow the procedures for leaving. All, all appliances must be unplugged and cords left showing. All lights must be turned off. Refrigerators must be defrosted and cleaned. All perishable trash and food items must be taken out. The windows are to be closed and locked, and the room door also locked before leaving. Students may leave their own belongings in the room at their own risk but are urged to remove all valuables. The college will provide some surveillance of the resident halls, but it will not assume responsibility for personal items. The temperature of the rooms will be kept at 50 degrees Fahrenheit, so please take any necessary precautions for house care. And Student Board of Governors President Jimmy Montgomery announced at Monday's meeting that the tower will be sponsoring a debate between the 1995 presidential and vice presidential candidates for SDAG. This debate between the parties of Brian LaMasters and Tim Picana, Todd Ollinger, and Mandy Allen will be held in Renner 2 on November 30th at 8.30 p.m. A youth of candidates reception will also follow the, the debate. Darlene Nicholson, Dean of Student Life, asked the students to come forward and be willing to help in transporting others to or from the airport for the break. I'm sorry, and also John Cunningham, Dean of Students, reminded students at the meeting that the group to take home valuables and lock up rooms thoroughly over the break to ensure that theft will not occur. A recent accident may hamper a West Virginia quarterfinal football game. The car crash that occurred yesterday in Charleston left several teenagers injured. The car, driven by a 16-year-old girl, plunged into an area river, leaving five of the six passengers injured. Four of the passengers play for DuPont High School's football team. The team coach doesn't know if the players will be able to play in Friday's AAA quarterfinal in Charleston. Only two of the passengers remain hospitalized. A former West Virginia state police worker may face punishment for breaking his own state laws. Chemist Fred James faces several felony counts related to his testimony in a past murder trial. Zane worked for both West Virginia and Texas State Police Labs for a number of years before he was fired from the San Antonio job. He was dismissed from his work because of a recently surfacing problem. The West Virginia, the West Virginia State Supreme Court claimed James frequently mishandled the evidence related to his lab work. A former work release inmate is finding himself in more trouble than when he stayed in prison. The man is charged with murdering a Charleston area woman several summers ago while on work release from the Charleston Work Release Center. He is believed to have stolen her car and her credit cards after killing her. The man blames his wife for the murder and says she thought the accused and the victim were having an affair. A tropical storm is moving into the Gulf of Mexico near Key West. Officials are keeping an eye on the storm that they've named Gordon. If it gains speed, it could turn up towards land with winds reaching up to 50 miles an hour. 
So now, what's the weather looking like for the next week? Well, it's going to be sort of cloudy and some rain for the next few days, but coming near the end of the week, it's going to get sunnier. Stay tuned for this and much more after this break. But first, take a look at tonight's trivia question. When I was your age, my mama asked me if I wanted to be a secret friend to a family that was out of work and didn't have food money. Secret friend? Every week we'd sneak over and a stack of groceries on the outside porch. And you never found out, and I never told you. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, secret friend. Yeah. Family Dad, Pastor Lawrence, your children need them now more than ever. From the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter day Saints. Nine degrees. It's a low today at 53. The wind is set at 7 miles per hour. The barometer at 30.31 and precipitation at 0.02. Uh, another look at our size space. In Pittsburgh, we have 52. Washington, 52. Morgantown at 51. Wheeling at 53. And Bethany at 53. And now to look at our forecast. We have some rain down into Florida and some moving up into the northeast and also some over into the west. Uh, now to look at our highs. We have some 80s down into the south of Florida, 70s into Georgia, and 60s up into the Great Lakes. Over in the southwest, we have some 40s and down into Texas, some 60s and 70s. Now to look at our radar. We have some rain into Florida and also some in the central part of the United States and a little bit over in California. And now for our satellites. We have some cloud covering moving from the central part of the United States up into the Great Lakes and also a little over into Texas. And now for tonight's forecast. Tonight it will be mostly cloudy with the low from 30 to 40. For tomorrow, we will have mostly cloudy with a chance of slight rain, the high in the 50s. For tomorrow night, it will be mostly cloudy with, I'm sorry, it will be clear with a low in the 30 to 35. And for Thursday, it will be mostly sunny with a low from 50s to 60s. So now it looks like we're going to have some nice weather in order to get home today. Yep, that's right. <laughs> okay. The tropical storm named Gordon, which is presently moving toward Florida, has caused widespread damage in another country. Haiti has suffered at least 100 casualties due to the storm. Because the storm occurred as the country is coming out of a three-year military rule, the state of emergency that has been called is considered to be an emergency on top of an emergency. U.S. relief is being sent to the country. Haiti suffered large areas of destruction, and $3 million will be used as part of the cleanup effort. The Catholic Church is planning to voice its opinion about violence and sexual abuse policies. U.S. bishops are urging all members of the church to work for peace by opposing abortion, euthanasia, and the death penalty. The church is also stating that support is needed in areas of gun control, racial harmony, and global disarmament. 
A special committee of the Catholic Church is also recommending that sexual abuse policies cover all church employees, not just the clergy. In other national news, the government has released a new report on radiation experiments. According to the report, the government sponsored at least eight Cold War era studies in which cancer patients were bombarded with total body radiation. The advisory committee has concluded that the treatment completed on these patients showed no medical value. The committee also said that in many cases, the patients were not told of the risks involved. The advisory, the advisory committee is a group studying the Cold War testing to see if patients receive radiation for purposes other than treating their illnesses. A new program may help kids to start learning early about how to influence the government. The Center for Civic Education has proposed national standards that will, would require children in kindergarten to start learning about voting and about citizenship. The standards are an effort to get children involved in school government and community political projects. The standards are also part of the National Education Goal of Voluntary Guidelines to what children should know in academic subjects after certain grades. A 21-year-old Ohio man from Toolbar Township is in custody today, accused of stabbing his older brother to death. The Monroe County Coroner's Office says Troy Green and his 24-year-old brother Curtis Green were involved in an argument late last night when the younger Green allegedly picked up a knife and stabbed his brother. Coroner Robert Allen says Troy Green ran to a neighbor's house to get help. But by the time it arrived, Curtis Green was dead. An autopsy will be performed today. Toolbar Township where and Pocono Mountain Regional Police are investigating, but no formal charges have been filed. The trial of a Pittsburgh man who falsely reported finding a syringe in a can of Diet Pepsi is beginning. Thomas Claypool of Bethel Township faces three counts of making false communications. Claypool is claiming that he found the syringe in a can of Diet Pepsi on June 15, 1993 in Armstrong County. His claims came during the nationwide consumer scare last year. The jury for the trial was selected yesterday. In other regional news, you can look forward to some bigger name acts at the Ohio State Fair next year. The state controlling board agreed yesterday to boost the fair's entertainment budget by $350,000 after a so-so year at the Celeste Center in 1994. This means that the fair will have one and three-quarter million dollars to spend on showbiz acts next year. Spokeswoman Jill Scaler says it's tough to fill a, a 17 nights with top entertainers. So the strategy is to go after a bigger name but fewer concert entertainers and supplement the acts with things like game shows. In economic news, are you going to be spending more money this Christmas on your Christmas gifts? According to a Cincinnati accounting firm, Americans will be spending approximately 11% more this holiday season than last year. That is about $68 more than the average shopper will be spending on gifts. And finally, the Voice of America has spoken its last words. After 52 years of service, the Voice of America transmission station is closing down. The government-run shortwave relay station that transmits around the world ended their programming today. The transmitter has been in operation since 1942 and was closed as part of a $400 million plan to consolidate U.S. overseas broadcasting. The station, located in Ohio, is being moved to another location and the 21 jobs are being eliminated. The show's last words, the song, Yankee Doodle. And now, the Bison Soccer team seems to be uh, the top of the campus right now, Chief. Can you give us some details on the weekend's Final Four game? Yep, we'll have the complete wrap-up of this past weekend's game, and the Pirates are getting a new owner, and the Globe Globeshotters have a new face. We'll tell you this and more coming up in sports. But first, check out the answer to tonight's trivia question. <laughs> American children, you can change a child's life to just a phone call and 70 cents a day by sponsoring an American boy or girl through Christian Children's Fund. Call CCF today and become the most important person in the life of a child right here in America. <laughs> If you want 
gonna be cool. Stay in school. You got a lot on the line. Don't blow it with cocaine. For your help from the American Medical Association. Sports news. Midnight has just destroyed them back in his soccer Cinderella season. Just three weeks ago, Coach Cunningham and his team were hoping to get a bid in the NCAA playoffs. Today, the Bison is preparing for the national semifinals, which take place this weekend in Trenton, New Jersey. Yes, this is not a dream, this is real. Bethany College is just two games away from its first ever national championship. The latest victim, victim in the Bison's quest for the title bid? The Ducks last Sunday in the front of a packed home field. UC San Diego, the defending national champs, were knocked out of the tournament after four overtimes and a shootout. The Bison seem to have an upset in their hands in regulation, but the Trittons, who have won three of the last six national championships, tied the game with just, with just 54 seconds remaining, setting the stage for one of the greatest overtime tournament games in history. After four scoreless overtimes, it went down to a shootout, which the Bison won when goalie Miala Sala stopped the goal and Bethany made its next kick. The only second time the Bethany will take the field in the national semifinals, last time being 1982 when the Bison lost to Greenville in the finals 2-1. Now the California kids are done for their season and back home surfing, the Bison can post you from their next challenge, which won't be any easier. They face a Wisconsin Oshkosh team who has yet to lose all season. The Pirates is only the second blemish on their record. After the game, Coach Cunningham said his team has a good excuse me, playing good as anybody in the country and says he hopes that they can carry the momentum into next weekend. It looks like the Pittsburgh Pirates may be sold to a Pennsylvania tele cable television executive. Mayor Tom Murphy says the city needs to be agreement with John Regas. Murphy says he's going to ask the Urban Re Redevelopment Authority to submit Regas's name to the current team owner. Regas is Chief Executive Officer of Al Aldelphi Communications Corporation. That's the cable company that owns and operates mostly suburban and rural cable systems throughout the East. The Pittsburgh Steelers continue to dominate when they play on Monday Night Football. Last night, the Steelers' defense came up big, scoring two touchdowns in the 23-10 victory over the Buffalo Bills. Rod Woodson returned an interception 37 yards for one of those touchdowns and forced a fumble that Gerald Williams recovered in the end zone for the other. The Steelers are now seven and three on the season, while the Bills drop to five and five. Philadelphia Eagles expect one of their players to miss the rest of the season due to injury. Linebacker Brian Evans suffered a career-threatening injury when his leg was broken this past Sunday. The injury was Evans' second broken bone in many years. And the Harlem Globetrotters have a new face on their team. NBA star Daryl Dawkins announced today he will be wearing the famous blue and red uniform for the Trotters. Dawkins skipped a chance to play in the Continental Basketball League to join the Globetrotters. A former Washington Redskins player has a December 6th arraignment date set for his drug case. Former Pro Bowl player Dexter Manley was taken into custody on Sunday night and charged with a felony possession of crack cocaine. Manley was banned from the NFL for violating the league's drug policy. A familiar name in tennis claims an easy victory in the first day of the play at the ATP Championship. Andre Agassi needed only 45 minutes to defeat Alberto, Alberto Versace in a straight set. Agassi will play again in the round robin on Thursday. And finally, Saturday's game between Boston College and West Virginia has been moved to noon for national television. The Big East Network will carry the game live in some markets, including West Virginia, while other areas will see the Virginia-Virginia Tech game. And now back to Robin and Vanessa. Thanks, Keith. Up next on News Center 2, we have a newsmaker interview with TV, TV3's very own first day anchor, Diana Presla. Check out for these messages. <laughs> Well, 
Tonight on Newsmaker 3 host is Dear Freeman. He talks with Diana Presbuck. Hello and welcome to Newsmaker 3. I'm your host, Dear Schlingman. Newsmaker 3 is an interview show featuring Bethany personalities in the news. Newsmaker 3 is produced by Street of TV Production Class. Tonight, Newsmaker is Diana Perez Dyke. Hello, Diana. Hello, dear. How are you doing? Fine, thank you. Diana is an intercultural communication major and, mm -hmm. and she just came back from a one year study at Vienna, uh -huh. correct? At the, Aus uh, at the Austro American Institute. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about it. Well, as you say, I was there for three months. I decided on Vienna because uh, Vienna is a city that's strategically located in, in the center of Europe, and it was a part of Europe that I didn't know. Mm -hmm. And Vienna is beautiful, and I spent three months studying the Austro American Institute, which teaches in both German and English, mm -hmm. and I loved it. And uh, it was thanks to um, a lot of help from Bethany that I was able to design a program to study in Vienna. It's very nice. I have you traveled to uh, several European cities. Mm -hmm. Can you name a few of them and, and can you tell us something about your experience? Sure. Uh, my area of interest is Eastern Europe, Central and Eastern Europe, and so I decided to uh, study in the whole region uh, as much as I could. Uh, Poland, uh, the Czech Republic, Slovakia, and I even made it all the way up north to Estonia, which is close to Finland. And I went to Russia for the December elections. I was in Moscow and St. Petersburg during the elections in December. So I got a feel for the whole region, which is my field of study. Mm -hmm. Is it true that uh, Moscow is a dangerous city? I keep hearing. Mm. Yes, it is. It is. I noticed that the night that I arrived, there was an incident where we almost got hurt by the local mafia. Uh, there was a car chase. Uh, you know, the mafia is now mm -hmm. following in Russia. And Oh, yes, it is, uh, and you have to be very careful, particularly as a foreigner, because you can't understand the alphabet is nothing like ours, and, and people are still not accustomed to visit us, so it is a dangerous city. But in general, Russians are very friendly, and uh, St. Petersburg, for instance, was a lot more calmer, a lot more safe. Mm -hmm. And back in Vienna, I heard you met, you met some high class <laughs> Tell us why. Yes, well, I... Um, I was taking watching classes at a school, and uh, I decided to try out for the Opera Ball, which is a very important social event in Europe. And I tried out, and uh, I was able to open the ball with uh, uh, a waltz. And at that ball, since I was the only American debutante, I met um, the president of Austria, the prime minister, I met the mayor of the city, and uh, um, people like Ivana Trump, and uh, the tenor of Freda Krauss. So it was a really magical night. It was a very interesting and, and fun and unforgettable night. Mm -hmm. What is the most important lesson you learned overseas? 
the most important lesson, probably they say that the most interesting person you meet overseas is yourself. And that is true, at least it was in my case. And, and perhaps it was self-confidence. Uh, it was that was the biggest lesson for me. The fact that I can uh, travel by myself, I can make uh, decisions that are important by myself, and that I can I can be fine away from home, away from from my family. So perhaps self-reliance is the most important thing I learned. Mm -hmm. This is your last year in Lebanon, correct? Mm -hmm. And um, I assume you want to go into the international, I mean, you want to do international journalism, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. Like, what are your plans after your studying? Well, uh, after May, I will either uh, attend graduate school or I will uh, uh, get a job. And I'm interested in the areas of California and Florida because of their multicultural diversity. And I'm interested in the ways in which uh, media professionals deal with this multicultural diversity. Mm -hmm. So perhaps my first move will be to go uh, out west or down south. How many languages do you speak? Only two. Uh, mm -hmm. Spanish and English, and I'm learning German slowly. Mm -hmm. And I plan to learn uh, to get good at German, uh, hopefully learn French, and sometimes a Slavic language, maybe Russian, Czech, or Slovak. Those are my plans, but mm -hmm. when I see them, I don't know. But so did you get to practice uh, your slow walk a little bit when you went to Bratislava? Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> actually, I was a month in Bratislava. You know, it's the capital of a new nation. Czechoslovakia uh, is separated, and now Slovakia is a brand new nation. And Bratislava is the capital of fashion mm -hmm. because it has to come up with all these new uh, institutions as a new nation. And uh, perhaps... Um, it was one of the most interesting places I, I visited, and I didn't know so much. I learned a little bit, just learned slightly uh, how to use a couple of words. Uh, but mostly I, I uh, hired interpreters or uh, spoken English or with my hands. Mm -hmm. Did you get a, a similar dangerous feeling like in Moscow and in Java, was it? Um, I think not, um, probably because I, I had a family there that uh, monitored my my schedule and I, there was always somebody that knew what I was doing and when. Um, I think um, in general Central mm -hmm. Europe is, is um, a little bit yeah, challenging. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for coming by, Diana. Thank you very much for joining us and I hope we will see you at our next show of Youth Make a Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Thanks, sir. Now we'll move on to weather and Robin and so Marilyn, what's the weather for this week? Well, tonight it is going to be mostly cloudy with a low from 30 to 40 for tomorrow and a chance of rain with a high in the 50s for tomorrow night. It will be clear with a low from 30 to 35 and Thursday it will be coming sunny with a low from 50 to 60. <coughs> Thanks, Marilyn. That's it for this evening's report. Now it's time for New Center 3 Pick Song of the Day, supplied by a member of the New Center 3 crew. Tonight's selection is provided by my very own co anchor, Robin Lineski. Be sure to stay tuned to TV3 tonight for more Bethany's like programming this evening. At 6 o'clock, the Bethany Video Network. At 7 o'clock, a new telecast of New Center 3, followed by tv 3s presentation of Bethany Men's NCAA from soccer versus University of California at San Diego at 7.30. Thanks for being with us tonight.